Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Fix Flicks. In this tutorial, we will install a copy of Windows within Windows using Oracle VM VirtualBox. Why would we want to do this? We may wish to run our test software in a sandbox environment, thereby preserving the integrity of the main system. Or, we may wish to experiment with an older version of Windows, typically Windows 8 or 7, to test compatibility or for reasons of pure nostalgia. This tutorial assumes that you have already installed VirtualBox. In the event that you haven't and require assistance setting up this free software, please see our supporting tutorial, Install Oracle VM VirtualBox, before following this video. Having installed VirtualBox, we now need to obtain a copy of Windows in the form of an ISO file. Versions of Windows 7, 8 and 10 can be freely downloaded from Microsoft's website, although note that from a licensing perspective, we will require a valid activation code for any prolonged use of an installed system, just as we would for a regular installation. We start with Windows 10, which can be obtained from the link on screen now and also in the written description accompanying this video. Click on the link to download the Media Creation Tool. The Media Creation Tool downloads quickly at under 20 megabytes, although the supporting Windows 10 software is substantially larger. Once downloaded, we click upon the upward pointing arrow in Google Chrome, which turns downward with the appearance of a menu, from which we select the option to open. As we are running a program, namely the media creation tool, rather than downloading the ISO file directly, on most systems this action generates a query from user account control, and we simply select yes to proceed here. We are advised that the application is getting a few things ready. Whilst it does that, we close the background web page in order to focus on the media creation tool alone. As ever, acceptance of the license terms is obligatory and we must select accept in order to proceed beyond this point. For a second time, the tool takes a moment to get a few things ready, before we are presented with two options. As it is our intention to create an ISO file, we click away from the default and instead choose to create installation media. We are presented with default language, edition and architecture options, which would actually be fine for our purposes. However, should we wish to vary any of these options, we untick the box to use recommended options for this PC. Doing so unfreezes the three drop down menus from which selections can be made. The language selection options are both comprehensive and self explanatory, and we select United Kingdom to reflect our localization. Windows 10 is the only option presented in the Edition menu, so no changes are possible here. We can choose between either 32 or 64 bit architecture, or obtain both with a slightly larger download. As we have the option to run 64 bit guest operating systems under VirtualBox, we select the 64 bit version of Windows. For a further discussion of 32 and 64 bit systems and how to identify them, see part 3 of our Windows installation series pre-installation steps. We are then presented with a choice of installation media, and we select the option to create an ISO file. Although the description references burning to a DVD later, we will simply use the file itself as a virtual disk in VirtualBox, and therefore no burning is required. We click next to proceed. Now we need to tell the system where to save the complete ISO file once it has downloaded. We have free choice as to where we save the file, so any disk with around 5GB of free space will be fine. We navigate from the default to our downloads folder. We accept the default file name Windows and click save to proceed. For the final time, we pause as a few things are readied. Before the download proper begins. This can be time consuming on slower connections and you may wish to take a break here. Once the download has concluded, a secondary phase of creating the Windows 10 media will immediately follow. At the conclusion of the process, we have no requirement to burn the file to disk and therefore do not need to open the DVD burner. We simply select finish to exit the media creation tool. The tool requires a few moments to clear its tracks and this will be a longer process on slower systems. Once the tool closes, we can inspect the download location and in this instance, we note that a disk image named Windows has been created. We can now run VirtualBox and use this disk to create our virtual Windows 10 machine, which we will do later in this tutorial. For Windows 8.1 installations, the process differs marginally, 
Begin by navigating to the download page shown on screen now and also linked in the written description accompanying this video. On the download page, we are required to select an edition. Unless there is a specific reason for making an alternative selection, the plain Windows 8.1 without K, N or single language markers is the default selection. With our choice made, we click the confirm button to advance. The request is validated, although it's difficult to determine what this is validating from the one drop down we have accessed. A secondary drop down appears, this time inviting us to select the product language. From the menu which appears, we drop down to select English, and with our language choice in position, we click confirm to progress. The request is again validated, after which we are presented with the option to download 64 or 32 bit versions of the software. We again select the 64 bit version and our download begins. Once concluded, we click the upward pointing arrow and from the menu which appears, we select the option to open in folder. Our download folder opens, revealing the disk image file named Win 8.1 English X64. Your file name may vary to reflect your choices. Again, we can now simply use that disk image in VirtualBox as described later. For Windows 7, the process is again somewhat familiar, yet somewhat different. We navigate to the download page shown on screen now and in the written description accompanying this video. We scroll down and note the requirement to enter the 25 character product key. This is typically found on the physical installation disk, a sticker attached to the machine, a key card or in the packaging or emailed receipt. Simply enter the product key and click verify. Again, the key will be validated. Unfortunately, our journey ended here. Despite having a number of valid licenses, they were all disqualified, either by virtue of being OEM licenses, i.e. software installed by the manufacturer and acquired as part of a full system purchase, or they were standalone licenses, which had been upgraded as part of the free Windows 10 upgrade program. In this predicament, our best option is to follow the steps outlined in our Ditch the Discs tutorial series and create our own ISO file from our master disk, using that ISO file created to install Windows 7 in VirtualBox. We will now set up a virtual machine for Windows 10. The process is largely similar for Windows 7 and 8, varying only with the choice of source disk from those we have now downloaded, and possibly by the specification of the virtual machine. Having downloaded and installed VirtualBox in our last tutorial, we now open it. We select the machine option from the menu bar and select new in order to create a new virtual machine. Note that the keyboard shortcut Ctrl N serves the same function. From the window which appears, we will configure the virtual machine for our Windows installation. VirtualBox can host 32 and 64 bit operating systems, can emulate many possible hardware configurations and operating systems, including modern versions of Windows, Mac OS, Android, Linux and more. With this range of variables, the initial configuration defines the operating environment for the virtual machine. We start by naming the virtual machine, and the name is entirely arbitrary. We name our machine Windows 10, and VirtualBox immediately recognises this, and changes the type and version settings accordingly. Had we named the machine less literally, we would have needed to have used the drop downs to select these options manually. Also note that, were we to have installed Windows 7 or 8, we would have had to have made the appropriate selections from the drop down. We can also save the virtual machine in a location of our choosing, although in this instance we simply accept the defaults and click next to proceed. Now we select the memory size or RAM of the virtual machine. A sensible default will be allocated by VirtualBox and this will be a percentage of the actual RAM in our physical machine. If we allocate too much RAM, our physical machine will be unable to function properly, so we avoid the temptation to over allocate our resources. Notwithstanding, the TechFix Fix PC has 64GB of RAM to allow us to run multiple virtual machines, so we increase from the default to give our virtual machine 8GB by using the slider or typing directly in the box before clicking next to advance. Having configured the system memory, we now do likewise for the system storage. Again, we will be allocating storage to the virtual machine by using a portion of the hard drive space in our main machine. We can opt not to add a virtual hard disk, although that option isn't suitable for this project. 
and we can load an existing hard disk file should we have one saved. However, it is our intention to install to a blank drive, so we select the option to create a virtual hard disk now. With the default selected, we click Create. The hard disk file type can be selected from one of three options. We will use the default, although note that the other two options can be selected for compatibility with other types of virtualization software. Again, with the default selected, we click Next to advance. We can now choose between a dynamically allocated and fixed hard drive size. We opt for the default, dynamically allocated, as the file size increases as the drive is filled, rather than being automatically set to the maximum, and therefore occupying the maximum amount of real storage space from the outset. Now we select the file location and size of our hard drive file. For convenience, we accept both the default location and name for the hard drive file, and select a maximum size of 50GB for the virtual drive. Again, our physical drive has to be large enough to accommodate the size of the virtual drive, whilst leaving sufficient space for the regular operation of our computer outside of VirtualBox. Conversely, the virtual drive must be sufficiently sized to store both our copy of Windows and any programs we intend to run in that environment. We therefore look at minimum to 32GB and larger in accordance with the software installed. We click Create, and our new Windows 10 Virtual Machine appears in the main window, ready to be switched on. At this point we have set up the Virtual Machine for Windows, but we have not installed Windows onto the Virtual Machine. So when we start up the Virtual Machine by double clicking on it, we are required to provide a startup disk, just as we would be when installing Windows onto a new physical machine. We therefore click on the directory icon, and navigate to our Downloads folder where we've saved our downloaded ISO file containing the Windows installer. With the ISO file selected, we click Open, and this is directly equivalent to placing a DVD-ROM into an optical drive. With the Windows ISO now in the virtual drive, clicking Start runs the software on the virtual drive, namely the Windows 10 installer. If you've installed Windows before, you can simply proceed with the installation from here. If you're new to installing Windows, or would like a guided installation, Part 4 of our Installing Windows tutorial series picks up at exactly this point, and we would encourage you to follow that tutorial next. With that, you will have a functioning copy of Windows running within Windows to use in your projects. Join us next time when we install Ubuntu. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. If you can provide a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like more, you are very welcome to subscribe to the Tech Fix Flicks YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Subscription is of course entirely free and provides easy access to all of the videos posted here. Clicking on the neighbouring bell icon means you will be notified whenever a new video is posted. You can also keep in touch by following the official Tech Fix Flicks Twitter account. Until your next Tech Fix, goodbye.